High Society is a 1956 musical comedy that has charmed audiences for decades. It stars big names like Bing Crosby, Grace Kelly, and Frank Sinatra. The movie is known for its catchy music, witty dialogue, and a story that takes us into the lives of the rich and famous. It's a tale of love and choice set against a backdrop of high-class society and jazz music. The film stands out for its memorable songs and the star power of its cast. The music, especially the song True Love, has become timeless and the performances are still talked about today. It's a film that brings laughter, surprises, and even a few tears. Now, think about this, what makes High Society a lasting symbol of the film industry. For me, it's the combination of a stellar cast, unforgettable music, and a story that captures the essence of an era. And what about you? Do you have a special memory linked to High Society? Maybe it's a song that reminds you of someone, or a scene that always makes you laugh. We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Your experiences with this classic movie are just as important as the film itself. So, let's share and keep the spirit of High Society alive. High Society, the 1956 movie, is remembered for its star-studded cast and memorable music. It was one of the first films to feature popular actors and musicians together, which was a new idea at the time. The movie songs, especially True Love, became very popular and are still enjoyed today. High Society was also one of the early movies made in color, which made it stand out. Its story about love and relationships is easy to understand and relate to, which is why people still watch it. The film shows that family and love are important, a message that is timeless. This is why High Society is still talked about and watched even many years after it was first released. In the landscape of classic cinema, age differences among actors often go unnoticed, yet they can add layers of complexity to the characters they portray. In a notable film from the mid-20th century, the lead actors brought a range of life experiences to their roles, with most being significantly older than their original counterparts from a film released 16 years prior. This age gap was particularly pronounced in the male leads, with a 53-year-old actor stepping into the shoes of a character previously played by a 36-year-old and a 41-year-old taking on a role once held by a 33-year-old. The female lead, however, presented a contrast being six years younger than her predecessor. The narrative also touched upon the theme of growing up, with a reference to two characters having matured together, despite a notable age difference that would suggest otherwise. This was further explored in another film where two of the actors had previously collaborated, depicting a story of personal struggle and the complex dynamics within a troubled marriage. In her final screen appearance, Florence Wicks delivered a memorable performance. The film, a reimagining of the Philadelphia story, transported its narrative from the original Philadelphia setting to Newport, Rhode Island, aligning with the locale's celebrated jazz festival. In an unusual mix-up, the Academy Awards initially nominated a similarly titled comedy from the previous year for Best Writing Original Story due to a confusion with this widely released film. The error was later rectified, and the actual nominees, Edward Burns and Elwood Ullman, respectfully withdrew their nomination. In the musical landscape of the 1950s, a unique production took shape, diverging from the norm where the leading lady often showcases her vocal talent with a solo. Grace Kelly, central to the story, lent her voice only in a duet with Bing Crosby on True Love and a brief exclamation. The film's pacing was measured with an average shot length of 14 seconds, providing a steady rhythm to the visual storytelling. The journey of this project began with Maxwell Anderson's vision in 1949, evolving into a television adaptation of High Tour. By 1955, Anderson and John Monks Jr. had crafted a musical fantasy for the screen, with Arthur Schwartz composing the music. The collaboration between Bing Crosby and William S. Paley dates back to the 1930s with Crosby's radio performances on CBS. Crosby, a pivotal force behind High Tour, advocated for filming rather than live television production, leading to the utilization of DeZillu Studios' innovative multi-camera filming techniques. The production, filmed in November 1955, was a costly endeavor of $450,000, making it the most expensive television production of its time. Crosby's insistence on filming paid off with the special airing in March 1956. The cast included Nancy Olson, known for her role in Sunset Boulevard, and Julie Andrews, making her Hollywood debut. The musical numbers, composed by Schwartz with lyrics by Anderson, ranged from solos to ensemble pieces, contributing to the film's distinction as the first television film musical. 
Despite its lukewarm reception and Andrew's self-critique of her performance, the production remains a notable point in television history. The Decker Records release of the song score, narrated by Crosby, further cemented its place in the era's cultural fabric. In a unique collaboration, Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra performed the song Well, Did You Have A? which was a late addition to the film, marking the only duet between the two legendary singers in this production. Grace Kelly, who starred in the film, would later become the grandmother to a notable lineage including Andrea, Charlotte, and Pierre Casaraghi, Princess Alexandra of Hanover, and several others, leaving a legacy that extends beyond her Hollywood career. Louis Calhoun, another member of the cast, passed away in Japan shortly after his work on the film, making it his final appearance on screen as his subsequent role in The Tea House of the August Moon was recast due to his untimely death. A notable achievement for the film was the song True Love, which not only became a bestseller, but also earned its performers, Grace Kelly and Bing Crosby, platinum records. Interestingly, this accolade marked a unique moment in history as Kelly had ascended to royalty, becoming Princess Grace, by the time the award was presented. During filming, Crosby sustained a noticeable injury to his finger, evident in several scenes where his right index finger is visibly darkened. Additionally, the voice of Grace Kelly carried a distinct Italian flavor thanks to the dubbing skills of Fiorella Betty. Her voice was also lent by other artists in various films, highlighting the local adaptation of her performances for Italian audiences. This classic film brought together a remarkable ensemble of actors, all at different stages of their careers. The cast was headlined by a quartet of Academy Award winners, the elegant Grace Kelly, the charismatic Frank Sinatra, the legendary Bing Crosby, and the talented Celeste Holm, alongside Academy Award nominee Louis Calhoun. While Elizabeth Taylor was initially considered for the lead female role, it ultimately went to Grace Kelly, who was then 26 years old. Her co-stars, Frank Sinatra and Bing Crosby, were 40 and 53 years old, respectively, bringing a diverse range of experience to the production. Before their collaboration in the classic film, Frank Sinatra and Celeste Holm had already shared the screen in Tender Trap. Despite rumors of tension, Sinatra and Bing Crosby maintained a professional relationship during filming contrary to some biographers' claims of Crosby's aloofness affecting Sinatra. Adding a touch of authenticity, the well did you have a scene features a nod to periodicals of the time, with Dexter reading Touring Topics, a publication for automobile enthusiasts that predates its successor Westways. In the world of cinema, costume design plays a pivotal role in bringing characters to life. Helen Rose, the designer behind the elegant wardrobe in this film, also crafted the wedding dress for Grace Kelly's celebrated marriage to Prince Rainier. The film holds the distinction of being her last screen appearance before beginning her royal journey as Princess of Monaco. Years later, the story found a new audience on stage, with a musical adaptation that debuted at the St. James Theatre in New York City on April 27, 1998 captivating audiences for 144 performances. This adaptation allowed a new generation to experience the charm and sophistication of the story through the dynamic medium of live theater. 